So Brian was happy to have his laptop back so quick. <clears throat> so what was it? Just um, that date and time thing? I don't know why, how that gets turned off. Um, I don't know. Um, Chad, can you still hear me? Chad, can you still hear me? Sorry, Nick, can you hear me now? I can. Can All you right. hear me? I can. So Great. let's go. Perfect. My apologies. I had to mute the entire channel because there was some background noise. So oh, I think we're good to go now. Chad, yeah, would you like to kick it off? Yeah, sure. OK, so I thought I did already, but maybe it was on mute. Um, so again, greetings everyone and welcome to the next session in the Line Out Cloud webinar series featuring in ZSpace, a virtual reality teaching and learning system. My name is Jeff Panu. I'm business and operations lead for the Line Out Cloud. And joining us today, we have Nick Pinchock from ZSpace. Uh, there's, this is meant to be an interactive session, so uh, look at the bottom of your screen. You should find some buttons there for uh, enabling your chat window. If you have any questions or comments or points of clarification, go ahead and type those questions into the chat and we'll either address them in stride or um, at the end of the presentation, depending on what's appropriate. Uh, <clears throat> as a reminder and some logistics, the Light Night Cloud webinars are, uh, are on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Central Time and they are posted to the Light Night Cloud YouTube channel. So um, if you want to see this webinar uh, after this session and then share it with your colleagues or as well as accessing Previous webinars, feel free to go to the YouTube and type in Illini Cloud, and you should see the Illini Cloud YouTube channel where all these videos can be found. Also, if you're looking to find upcoming webinars uh, between now and the end of the year, as well as into next year, uh, they're usually contained within the bottom of the announcements. So uh, these are subject to change. So as they come in or, or come out, you'll be able to see kind of what's coming down the pipe um, in that particular area. With that, Nick. Please feel free to introduce yourself, and uh, you're already sharing your screen, so let's get started. 
Great. Thank you so much, Jad. And thank you, everyone who's online participating. Uh, I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to have this opportunity to present to you today. Uh, again, my name is Nick Pinchock. I'm the Midwest Sales Director for ZSpace. Uh, I'm based in Wheaton, Illinois, and I cover the states of Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Ohio, and Michigan. Uh, and again, I appreciate everyone taking time out of their very busy schedules uh, to be here today. And we're also incredibly excited about this new partnership we have with Illini Cloud. Um, it's a very high quality organization who's allowing us access um, to create some new opportunities we hope you're excited about uh, and we'll discuss in, in more detail at the end of today's presentation. And uh, it's just a great way to sort of validate the work that we're doing uh, through Illini Cloud's support and, and partnership. So again, thanks to Jat and to Jim Peterson for helping us get here today. We're, again, very excited about it. I typically assume that most people haven't heard of ZSpace. I joined the organization about a year and a half ago. I've been in education for over 18 years. I uh, worked in school districts. I've worked for community colleges. I've worked for vendors and found the company about a year and a half ago. When I started, most people hadn't heard of ZSpace, uh, and I'm assuming some of you haven't yet who are on today. The good news is, is that seems to be changing. Um, we've, we've done a lot of trade shows and conferences. We've had a bus tour going across the country nonstop for the past year. We've done some road shows. Uh, I've obviously done presentations and meetings at school districts. Uh, our social media and, and website, at which I'll be tapping into today, is uh, very engaging. So the good news is more and more people are hearing about ZSpace as they're hearing more about virtual reality. Um, obviously, this is a hot topic in the tech space. This is going to be a, a huge growth area, both in education, in the workplace, and on the consumer and home side. Uh, we feel that we're different um, from a lot of other virtual reality solutions that are out there. And, and one of our differences is that we're really focused almost exclusively on the K through 12 market, uh, which we'll talk more about later uh, during this presentation. Uh, but we feel we have some really powerful um, tools and resources and content and an approach to teaching and learning that we think uh, is, is very exciting, transformative. And again, I'll go into more detail on that in a minute. Um, I'm gonna do a brief presentation. I don't think we'll need the remaining 50 minutes. We'll certainly take all of it, and I wanna leave as much time as possible at the end for questions. But what I'm gonna do is start with two quick videos. They're about two minutes in length each, uh, and then I'll jump into um, uh, a few slides uh, for a presentation. And again, I wanna make the majority of, the, the, of our time today conversational. So I'm gonna start this video. Hopefully everyone can see it and hear it. Uh, please let Jad know if there's any issues. This will be the first of two videos. Again, it's just sort of a brief overview of what the technology is. Whether you're an experienced educator or a television news reporter, the reaction is all the same. Good morning. Revolutionary technology is coming to a classroom near you. I don't care if you're a medical school student or high school student. The new device is turning science fiction into reality. One of the first Bay Area schools to get its hands on a captivating new learning tool. Schools across the country are using this virtual reality to bring subjects like biology and anatomy to life. And today, the company behind real world virtual reality is right here in studio with us. It's revolutionizing education. Tell us how. This is a 3D immersive virtual learning platform, and it's called ZSpace, and it's used in classrooms all over the nation. This is crazy to me that this is what kids are learning on it. Students learn um, everything from biology, and anatomy, uh, botany, zoology, all the way up through uh, physics. And, um, and electricity and the science. How does this, I mean... So how does this work? You put on the glasses. That's right. These are special 3D glasses. They have five reflectors on them that the computer reads. I can just turn my head and get a different view of the heart. Yeah. Or use a pointer to manipulate in almost any way imaginable. These interactive 3D models really bring depth to the learning process. To understand these concepts in their own way and be able to articulate these concepts right, themselves. And we're using their own words instead of uh, reading back from, from the textbook. This is really the only desktop virtual reality out there. There are other uh, things that you wear that kind of immerse you into a, a virtual environment. Right. But they really don't uh, lend themselves very well to uh, uh, quantity. 
cooperative learning. This is a way for hands-on teaching of inner space of all sorts of things without fuzzy microscopes, embalmed animals, or expensive cadavers. No small parts, no risk of injury to the students. And just think how many frogs' lives could be spared in biology class. We're working on making it more accessible, and we're working on uh, enhancing the experience and making it apply more broadly to more things that happen in the classroom so it gets more affordable that way if you can use it more of the day and study more subjects with it. This is the work of ZSpace, a company using technology that was first developed for the Department of Defense. But they quickly found out they have an even more special place in the classroom, helping kids almost literally reach out and grasp difficult concepts. They began introducing it to classrooms in California three years ago, and now it's going worldwide. So that's the first video. Um, I'm very blessed and fortunate to work for a company that has a marketing budget and does do a lot of work uh, to get the word out on ZSpace. Um, the next video I'm going to show you is from an educator's perspective uh, versus more of a media perspective. And I'll start this in a second. Again, it's about a two minute video. Jad, is it, I assume everyone's able to hear and see. Yeah, <clears throat> it's coming through fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute all so people can make comments. Um, but so if there's background noise where you are, please go ahead and, and mute your specific line. All right. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Here is the second brief video. Z Space was so great because we've worked with computers and then we've seen movies in 3D, but we've never got to really interact in 3D. So it's the first time you can really use her almost a part of the actual machine. Our goal here in Plainview was to put these machines in front of as many students as possible within this one year. So we found out about it, we all like to pull each other to get towards the fruit. <laughs> like get on the computer first. When our 3D glasses, we were just all like, uh, we just started seeing what we can create. And the lesson planning that went behind this, it really brings it to life. I can have kids engaged. Our fifth grade teachers during professional development from ZSpace were able to collect and put together a folder with all the lab experiences that they wanted to share. So now they have everything ready to rock and roll when they're in there with the students. You can get a lot more done in your 42 minute period. Setting up some of these labs would be impossible in those kind of time frames. But you can walk into ZSpace and have the thing saved for the students already to go. Our fifth graders are working with the application called Newton's Park, and that's the same application that the AP Physics students use was Newton's Park. So it's interesting to see how it's being used at a high school AP level and in a fifth grade level. Sixth grade is using Franklin's lab. And then they're going to go back into the tech shops and actually design their own electricity boards. Then they're going to go back to ZSpace and create these electricity boards that we would never be able to afford or be able to let them do for safety reasons. What I love about this is the collaborative approach in the sense that I have two students, one with a stylus and the other student with the glasses on being a part of that lesson and they need to work together to problem solve. You can see what works, what doesn't work. Everyone's learning together. Those inquiry skills I think are second to none with a device like this. Okay, um, if anyone wants to see these videos again and, and doesn't go into the YouTube channel uh, to watch this uh, presentation later, the first uh, video is off of our main website, which is um, edu.zspace.com. And that will take you to this link that you see in front of you and just certainly hit the play button. Uh, if anyone would like the other, you can Google virtual reality in the K through 12 classroom in ZSpace and it should take you to the video. And if not, I can, I can send out a link uh, after today's presentation. So um, I'm going to go into just a little bit of background information on the organization and how this program was developed. Uh, Jad, again, please stop me at any point and, and anyone can chime in with any questions. Uh, but again, giving a, a, just a, a little different perspective on what we're doing with virtual reality compared to other people and really what we are hoping to accomplish in the education space, which we're already off to a pretty good start. And again, would love to collaborate with everybody on the phone uh, to do this. 
first of all, ZSpace has been around for about 10 years. You heard in the first video that the uh, solution was developed with and through a partnership uh, with the military and the Department of Defense. Way, it's the way that tons of technology has been developed in the past, as you know. What we were asked to do was to help analysts who read 3D, or excuse me, read maps of other countries to interpret information in a more accurate way. And the request was for virtual reality and the opportunity to have a more collaborative tool or approach to do that. Uh, so think of some analysts in rooms all over the world and country looking at maps of North Korea or Russia, things like that. Uh, and there are hundreds and hundreds of ZSpace systems uh, out there currently doing this uh, as we delivered on the solution. And what they wanted was, again, something that was three-dimensional to provide more accuracy uh, and more spatial depth and awareness. If you think of doctors who've worked on us for years, uh, who've looked at a two-dimensional x-ray and said, oh, well, here's where the fracture is or here's where the tumor is. It can only be so accurate. So these analysts wanted to be able to enter into a map and see it and work with it and experience it in three dimensions, which we were able to do, and that's what virtual reality can do. What we were able to deliver on on the collaborative side was the ability for multiple people to see and experience and work on something together. Uh, I'll show you some other examples of that in a second, um, but you probably saw it in the displays and, and the description from, from the educators that two or three people can be working on our display, which is a Windows 10 computer that has infrared cameras and work with the glasses to, create, to produce the three-dimensional view, but also these uh, scenes, models, experiments, investigations, maps can be looked at simultaneously by multiple people. I can look up and leave a scene very gracefully and have a conversation with a teacher or a partner and then get back into it very easily because it's not a head-mounted device that blocks me from another person. So they were thrilled with what we delivered, and then we spent the next few years trying to determine where we would go next. We approached a lot of organizations. We approached a lot of industries, and we pretty much hit on um, education. And, and there's multiple reasons why we feel there's a great fit here in classrooms and in the learning environment. You hear people saying all the time, I'm a visual learner. Well, we do a lot of our visual learning in two dimensions, books, videos, screens, maps, uh, smart boards. And to take that extra dimension and the 3D capabilities to it, allows us to really get the full grasp conceptually of what I'm working with. And, and the, the power of this is both the ability to see things microscopically as if they're in my hand and also to be able to see um, all things, animals, cells and viruses, parts of the human body, ramps, um, lots of things in three dimensions. So it really taps into that visual and spatial capability. Everyone knows, and the research on learning is irrefutable. Kids and adults need engaging experiential tasks and activities. Uh, you probably saw some of the gasps by the kids that they are highly engaged using virtual reality. So we're able to produce something that is obviously engaging. Kids love technology, adults love technology. So there's a high level of engagement. However, the experiential doing is something that's possible with our technology and our solution. I can actually create and build and run a physics experiment. I can do a virtual dissection of a frog, of a human eye, of a dinosaur, of a volcano. Um, I can build those electric boards that the educators were talking about that sixth graders were doing. I can take a motor, a switch, a transistor, a wire, a light bulb and create something and actually if it catches on fire I don't have to worry about the smoke detector going off. I can build things and I can also work with two three-dimensional models in math. Just think of a plane and a cone and take those and cut those through each other and see the different shapes that they're made as they intersect. 
So the doing and the experiential piece is very important in, in his research-based teaching and learning. And lastly, I would say that um, the research on, on learning wants there to be personalized learning, yet collaborative learning. And you can do and have both of those in the same space. If I'm making a personal connection to content, to a model, to an image, um, but I'm also collaborating with my peers, um, that's where the power is. That's how we work as adults. Um, most virtual reality to date is a head-mounted device where I'm having a solo or singular experience with it. I can talk about it, but there have been to date, and it's not exclusively, but some limitations to my ability to collaborate with peers. So if 25 students are wearing a head-mounted device in a room, it's personalized, it's engaging, it may not be experimental, experiential or collaborative. So what you're seeing on this screen is, is the ways that we want to engage students with our solution, which is both hardware and software, and I'll get into some of that more in a second, um, but we really feel we're delivering research-based instruction, transformative instruction, as well as um, tapping into the research on how people learn with virtual reality, which is actually decades old. And, and what the research has shown is that when I walk into and enter into a virtual space, I can remember what I'm doing and make that connection to the concept or the content or the activity as if I'm doing it for real. I can describe it in greater detail and I can hold on to that knowledge longer. So there's, there's been decades of research that started with flight simulators and, and driving cars virtually, but now they're doing it on behaviors and activities that preschoolers are doing, and it's very compelling. So that's what we're trying to do, uh, and give students these tasks through different uh, apps and programs that we have. Um, excuse me as I... Uh, jump around here, but um, what we have are different programs and activities that we've developed for ZSpace. If you go to edu.zspace.com, there's a list of every activity and lesson plan that we've created, and we create those with teachers, real-world educators who are current practitioners. Um, they write them in collaboration with our software people, and these are actual activities that students can do. Um, and we provide these to our clients every day and give them things they can do tomorrow with ZSpace. We've aligned these to uh, lots of standards, uh, what were the next generation science standards that have now sort of siphoned out into individual state standards. There's alignments to nearly all states out there on the science side. We have alignment to common core math and other standards. Um, but just also know that it's an open source system too. So you can use our apps and our programs to create your own lessons if you choose not to use the nearly 500 that we have. And you can also bring in uh, models that you've created that students are designing uh, that you find from open source uh, places or other sources like museums, universities, corporations, designers, and, and you can use the technology in a more custom way in addition to the activities that we have. Let me just stop here for a second and just see if there are any questions from Chad or anybody on, on, the, on the call. Uh, so far, the, the first question that we've gotten has been, it's kind of a two-part question. What's the price per workstation uh, access to content? And the second part of the question is, when you eventually lose a pen, I know what do you do from there? So as far as the first part of the question, so Line Eye Cloud has worked out in a, an agreement and arrangement with uh, ZSpace such that you can get um, kind of access to bundles of equipment. So five for ten thousand dollars per year and ten for twenty thousand dollars a year. That gives you full access to content, including uh, support and professional development. So for more information on that, please feel free to reach out to myself, Jat Panu at alignacloud.org or to Nick who will, I'll paste his contact information into the chat. Um, so uh, definitely uh, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. And then the second part of the question, uh, Nick, I'll go ahead and turn that over to you. What happens when people lose pens? It looks like they were tethered, but uh, go ahead and have you experienced that problem before and what it was usually how people address it. Sure. No, those are good questions. Um, 
the the stylus, which is the pointing device, and let me uh, try to go back up to a vis uh, visual of that. Um, you can sort of see it down here in the uh, the bottom right. It is tethered. It is plugged into the back. We don't get a lot of people losing styluses. Um, a stylus could get damaged if I dropped it onto a cement or hard tiled floor. There's a chance that the stylus could crack. Hopefully, it's tethered and and the wire is such that it's not going to drop on on the floor. But if I unplugged it and dropped it, it could crack or break. They're not indestructible. Um, with most configurations we sell, and with the uh, solution that Jad is. Um, uh, mentioned we have what's called an accessories kit that just gives you um, if for some reason something breaks or gets misplaced um, you do have extras there we don't want to make money on the accessories um, uh, it's something that's just a function of keeping you operational and again we try to seed it with a few extras just in case something breaks but we don't hear a lot of that in the field and actually the stylus or the glasses that have the five sensors on them um, they can both stretch over a student's glasses or we can give you clip-ons um, the main glasses that aren't clip-ons are very flexible I have sort of flung them across the room before or across the table and 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 they are more indestructible than the styluses so uh, we are designing them to be sort of kid friendly and, and something that isn't too fragile great <clears throat> thanks nick and just as a reminder you know if people want to actually kind of touch and play with with this equipment uh, they will have we will have some available in bloomington uh, for people to come down and visit and maybe play with the different uh, uh, setups and configurations that we have. So, you know, don't be shy. Please feel free to reach out to Jim Peterson. And if you'd like to kind of see some in action, uh, go ahead and come on out. And that's my job. Uh, my job is to come out and visit with districts in the five states that I mentioned. I'm obviously based in Illinois, so uh, Illinois is a little easier to get to. I've, I've been in lots of districts the past year and a half showing this to clients. If you haven't seen it yet, um, you'll have access to my contact information. I would love to set up an appointment. Absolutely. Um, and just to put a finer point on that, so for any additional kind of questions, comments, on-site demos, remote demos, uh, Nick's your guy. So please feel free to reach out to Nick and, and uh, coordinate those logistics. Sure. Um, I talked about the activities that we have, and, and, and I'm, again, very fortunate. When, when I started with the organization, we had a significant amount of content that we're, we're basically doubling, if not more, every year. When I first started, there was no activity designed for, for ZSpace. It was a system to pull in designs, and we had people who bought that. We had people who purchased that. Uh, nearly five years ago that are still using it for that purpose and, and on this screen I, I just want to touch on the design and the creation aspects of the system uh, again we want to have classes of kids doing virtual experiments as much as possible in a school uh, when a configuration is in place uh, in nearly all of our clients not all of them but in, in the majority of the clients there are enough systems where a class of 20 or 30 students can come in and do a physics experiment together in groups of two or three. They can do math problems together. They can study the pyramids or social studies. They can do virtual dissections, as I mentioned, chemistry experiments, um, microbiology exploration. So we want classes of kids working together just like they would in a regular classroom with our solution and, and that is how nearly all of our students uh, uh, and, and, and districts work with us. Everyone's heard of makerspaces though and, and the importance of design and creation and, and we do tap into that space mostly in two ways and, and there'll be other ways coming. Uh, we do have a virtual design tool that's called Leopoly. Um, it's free and comes with the systems when you get them and it's both a virtual ball of clay that I can use the stylus to morph and manipulate into anything and create OBJ files. 
do 3D printing with it if I have a 3D printer, but also just create anything out of this virtual ball of clay. There's a second uh, component where I can take pieces of other body parts, animals, things like that, and put that together. But we want to encourage students to also tap into that more creative side, the A in STEAM, and, and a lot of people use Leopoly either for creative arts or for design. Additionally, we essentially work with nearly all CAD and design software programs. There aren't too many limitations to what you can do and pull into ZSpace. And if you think, you know, most, I mentioned doctors before that tried to diagnose in 2D. We do a lot of three-dimensional design in 3D. And obviously I can get a version of that three-dimensional design, but in ZSpace, I can actually pull up a house, a shoe, a product, almost anything that I design, a car, an engine, and hold it and feel it and tear it apart in three dimensions right in front of me. So if your students are doing CAD, if they're using Autodesk, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, um, most of the programs that are out there, just know that if I pull something into ZSpace and look at it, we just want them to be working with .stl or .dae file formats. Um, I can pull in an OBJ file, I can pull in something else, I can pull in an image or a picture off the internet. I can look at almost anything, but if I wanna have um, as much interaction with it and complexity and get inside and, and hold and, and see things in, in more depth, uh, it's those two file formats um, that we encourage and recommend, um, but it's another powerful way to use ZSpace. Um, let me talk now about professional development um, with the solution and offering that we're making available to and through Illini Cloud and, and other participants with this unique partnership. Um, it's a way to try ZSpace systems for a year, um, get them into your schools and find ways to use it successfully. Um, if at the end of the year you feel that it was an experiment that went awry, you can return them um, at no additional charge. We don't think that's gonna happen, and we hope that doesn't happen, and, and we wanna start seeding units and trying it in different places and building successful implementations and programs. I have to say that, that we do require professional development with each partner and with each uh, client we work with, and it is part of this bundle. Um, when you work with us at a minimum through this partnership and others, we will come out and set all the systems up for you, uh, get them loaded, get them set up where you want them to be, make sure that they're functional and operational and connecting to anything else you, you feel or want they need to be connected with on your network. But also the professional development is very important. What we're seeing with most of our early adopters and clients is that you're gonna have some teachers and we did get most of our start with developing content in science. You've heard me mention dissections and physics and chemistry. So more times than not, the science teachers or science in elementary schools is the place where people start. And they see the possibilities, they see the power, we have experiments already set up and, and, and they can be used fairly quickly. However, we want people using this for math instruction. We want people using this for design and creation instruction. We want people using it for um, social studies and other content areas. Most teachers have not taught with virtual reality. That's just a fact and that's okay. This is new space. So we really feel we have to come in, sit down with your teachers on these units, walk them through how it's done, and we want to do as much professional development as possible. We have some minimum amounts that we'll provide to you that are just that minimum, and we would encourage you to get more professional development. Um, but, but this is critical to the success of the program. It doesn't mean that it's so hard to use, and, and we're able to get teachers up and running very quickly on a lot of activities and a lot of uses of ZSpace. Uh, but because it's new, what we're finding is you know, there's a lot of questions that come up along the way, and we do want to come back. Um, we can offer free phone support. We have technical support through our company that works East Coast through West Coast hours. Uh, we can certainly help with solving any issues or challenges you have. Um, but we definitely want to encourage you, if you are interested in ZSpace, to 
make sure that that investment in professional development is there to not only learn how to use the system, but how to optimize it. So Jad, I'll stop there again and uh, take either questions or thoughts. Great, so we've got a couple of different questions coming through. So question one, uh, more of kind of a reference customers kind of question. Can we find leading Z-Space districts in places like Boston area and others? That can be kind of like reference implementations and success stories. Sure. Um, we do have an interactive map um, that is on our website. And if you just Google Z-Space interactive client map, you'll be able to see a version of this. Um, we do have districts that have come on board recently. We do have districts who've purchased their systems and are in the process of, of getting set up. So just know that everyone is in a very different place. We have some clients that are four and five years old, and we have some clients that are four and five weeks old. Um, what I would encourage people to do is if they do want to talk to um, a reference or get a local feel, because I don't cover Massachusetts and I don't know who our power users are there, uh, Jad, if it would be okay to have them send an email to me and I'll get them in touch with uh, uh, hopefully a handful of, of districts who are using ZSpace in their area, I hope that's okay. Yeah, no, that's great. Perfect. Okay, second question. Having an open platform and SDK is great. Can we find others developing on the platform and do you have a process for certifying applications developed? Um, the... the Official answer is yes, we have a formal process. The unofficial answer is no, we don't. <laughs> um, what we are doing is blessing new apps that we make available to uh, districts across the country and the world. And if I didn't say it earlier, we are working with schools in, in China, Japan, Europe, uh, I believe Australia, we're, we're, we're all over the world with, with clients too in education. Um, and we have a business development team that vets uh, applications that we're developing and they release them as they are blessed and available. Those then become available to districts across the country. One of our new partnerships is with an organization called GeoGebra. It's a visual math tool used mostly in middle school and high school. They entered into an agreement with us this, this current year, and I was so thrilled because I had difficulty seeing calculus and, and seeing some, some advanced math concepts. And when I heard they were coming on board, I was excited but also nervous because I didn't know what they would charge. They chose to make GeoGebra available for free. So anybody who has ZSpace can go to GeoGebra and start downloading files and activities for ZSpace. Fantastic. So there is, a, there is a vetting process for our official apps that we release to the field. And, and we're constantly looking at new sources and we're in conversations and partnerships with people like Carnegie Mellon for their Robotics RoboMatters program, which I, I believe will be released fairly soon. Um, we're in contact with technology companies. We're in contact with education, software, and, and publishing companies. And, and we're, we're vetting a lot. The unofficial answer is that through our free SDK, you can develop an app. And, and I am in conversations with a high school in Colorado, or excuse me, in Columbus, Ohio, um, that wants to develop their own simulations and, and programs that they want to use in their high school. Those can be released and made available through a community sharing um, site that we have. And, and we want people to create new content and custom content and upload that to our community site. You can find that from our edu.cspace.com website. Um, that's just a little less rigorous. And we're trying to vet all of those both lessons and, and new apps as best we can. And, and we're new at that. So, um, you know, we want to know people who are developing and we want to have conversations with them and, and, you know, again, feel free to reach out to me and I can get you in touch with our business development team um, who is working on new content development and apps to release for ZSpace. Great. Uh, <clears throat> next question, do these units run a standard OS? I think you said Windows 10 or other day-to-day -day functions. Yes, they're Windows 10 machines. They are Windows 10 virtual reality enabled 
systems, but when they're not being used for virtual reality, they can be used for almost anything, you know, word, design, uh, you know, online searches, uh, online testing. It, it, it's a fully functioning Windows 10 system. All right, those are the questions for now. Um, excellent. What you know, we would hope to do is to be able to come out and um, meet with you individually. Um, this is something that needs to be seen and experienced in person. It's a challenge with videos and webinars, and I don't do a lot of webinars, and I don't do a lot of virtual sharing of ZSpace because it is a hands-on personal experience. Um, it is my job and our job to bring it to you and to show it to you and to get department chairs and administrators and teachers and students on the system. Um, so what I'm hopeful we can do is both locally and nationally with anybody who's participating today or who hears of this um, to contact our organization. Uh, you can go to our website and there is a chat and there's a place to go and request information. I'll also just very quickly share my email address. Uh, my name again is Nick Pinchock. Um, and as in Nicholas, he as in Pennsylvania, I and as in Nicholas, the H O K at cspace.com. Feel free to email, email me after today and ask for either your local rep, local ways of seeing this, or any other questions you have today, and, and we'll certainly you know, get your questions answered, set up a demonstration, uh, and just try to facilitate this ongoing journey with you into virtual reality, teaching and learning um, experiences. And again, what we're seeing so far is, is very powerful, and we hope we have the opportunity to part with, partner with more of you uh, very soon. And I went ahead and pasted uh, Nick's email address into the chat window so people can have access to, access to that. And if you have any difficulty at all, my information, Japanu, Japanu at lanacloud.org is also pasted in the chat window. So feel free to reach out to us uh, for any of your questions, comments, uh, or needs. And Jad, I'll just very quickly uh, close with again, edu.zspace.com is the place to go to get more information. I mentioned that we have, you know, a searchable list of activities here. Um, these are examples of those. So, you know, again, this is our entire set of lessons and activities. Uh, each of these activities have both um, lesson plans, worksheets that go to it. We can actually take worksheets and student work and upload that to Google Classroom. We are in a, a very formal partnership with Google as well. Some of these have instructional videos that show you how to do, in this case, the investigation conductivity experiment in a video. Uh, we also have um, nearly 2,000 models in multiple programs that students can look at and work with and take apart. Uh, we've got some free resources that talk about the programs we have um, and, and other information here. So I just encourage people to go to edu.cspace.com for a lot of information on the program. Great. <clears throat> a couple of uh, additional questions. So for content updates, so you're showing a lot of great content on your website and whatnot. So as new content's published, how does it get provisioned to the boxes that people have in place? Sure. Good question. Um, when you tap into this program that we are, are launching with Illini Cloud and, and gaining access to 10, 15, 5, 20 units, um, you get all the content that comes along the way throughout the course of the year. Um, as you can imagine, a lot of these files are pretty graphically intensive files, graphic intensive files. They're, they're almost like gaming files. So, um, these are downloaded from our site to your systems, and they are installed locally on your systems. We're not running currently in the cloud. These are programs that, that run locally if needed, and uh, we do updates a handful of times a year. We, we literally just uh, a week and a half ago 
did a fairly significant content update, update to uh, throw in about 50 more activities that our teachers had designed. So throughout the course of the year, you can either get them through this program that we're doing called ZSpace as a service, and you just tap into the service uh, on an annual or semi-annual basis, annual basis, excuse me, or you can purchase outright systems and gain access to them over the course of three to five years, or there's some annual maintenance uh, options that you can do as well. All right, great. <clears throat> Folks, uh, you're unmuted, so if you want to ask a question and not type it in the chat, feel free to. Uh, we have another question coming through. Um, have you tried these apps with Leap Motion? If you're not familiar with Leap Motion, it's a uh, it's kind of an IR kind of type of device. It looks like very much like an iPad or I, uh, Mac MacBook track point device. It sits in front of your computer, and as you move your hands through it, it kind of simulates VR, interactive VR experiences in 3D. Sure. Um, the answer I'll give you now is no. That doesn't mean that it's not in development. Um, with some people in our headquarters and, and, and looking at options like that, but to date, no. And I'm not sure, Leo, if I did your question justice. <laughs> so it's you a, Right. Yeah, I've done a lot of work with Leap Motion and with uh, Oblong Technologies as well, and um, which is another kind of a interactive virtual type space uh, device. Nothing with the, um, I don't think Leap has that VR piece, but I could see a good combination between using the two technologies together, which is what I kind of meant by losing the pen. And if we got rid of the pen and used our fingers, uh, I think it would enhance the learning experience with the uh, you know with our students. Well, let me just add to that real quickly. Um, there there is a way to transfer content to projectors and other devices, um, and that can be done simply through uh, an HDMI connection. Or we also have webcams and some software that can do some pretty cool augmented reality. Um, transfer of, of images that are on ZSpace. One, you do lose the interactivity with it. Um, so you can see something in augmented reality or in two dimensions, but you lose the virtual reality experience, um, just so you know. Um, and secondly, we have been working with someone from Japan who really was like the grandfather of our tracking device and system. And he's worked with us for the past 10 years to, to make our stylus and our tracking as optimized as possible. And, and it is. It, it, it has improved over time and continues to improve. And, and he is convinced, and, and we're pretty convinced, that there's more precision with it versus holding something or taking something apart with your hand. Um, I can't say that that's 100% true, um, but we've toyed with that. And we don't have a lot of problems with people holding something with the stylus and the laser that comes out of it that tracks it and allows you to get inside with a lot of precision. Um, and again, it doesn't mean we won't have a hand or glove option at some point, but to date we don't. Great. Other questions? Got about eight minutes left, so don't be shy. If you got a question, go ahead and either throw it to the chat or Feel free to speak. Everyone's unmuted. Uh, if you are on mute, you're muting yourself. Going once, going twice. All right. Well, I think uh, I think that concludes our webinar for today. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, Nick for you know this wonderful presentation. I, th I found it to be very enriching and and really showed the power of ZSpace. I found it to be. Uh, uh, very informative as well. So thank you so much for taking the time to walk us through all the all the great things that ZSpace for Education has to has to offer. Jad, thank you. Uh, thanks to you and Jim at Illini Cloud for for helping us launch this partnership. Thank you to all the participants. I know this is an incredibly busy time of year, so I really appreciate you jumping on today. Again, I hope it was informative, and we would love to partner with you and work with you. Just feel free to reach out to the website and, and, and log your information in there or feel free to send me an email and, and we'll get someone in touch with you in touch with you. Have a great rest of the year and thank you for your time today. All right guys. <clears throat> so I think that's a wrap for today. Uh, again, if you want to see an archive of this video, 
and feel free to share it with anybody you'd like to share it with. It's out. It's going to be posted within the next 24 hours at the Illini Cloud YouTube channel, as well as with the past videos. And for more information on upcoming videos, just look for the announcements. With that, thank you very much for attending, and have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.